As you can see from our in-hand photos, the G1X3 is a small-scale camera, at least in proportion to the sensor scale inside. The predecessor model has a smaller sensor, 1.5 inch, but that was a far larger camera overall. Talk about progress, eh? There's seemingly nothing missing from the MK's setup either. With a very angle touch screen and built-in electronic viewfinder, using the camera isn't a million miles away from a mini mirrorless or DSLR camera. Only you can't swap the lens, of course. The very angle screen we've found to be particularly useful for waist level work, or when stowing the camera away and turning the screen in on itself to avoid scratches. It's a touch screen, too, which makes light work of whizzing through the quick menu system to make settings adjustments, or for autofocus. There's also a touch and drag autofocus feature, which means you can press your eye against the viewfinder and use a finger on the screen to quickly move the autofocus point around. Thanks to the screen's very angle feature, it's potentially handy when the screen is protruding to the side, well, so long as you're right eyed. However, when the screen is in its standard against camera position, we found our face, nose would move the focus point way too easily. As camera go, the G1X3's build quality feels second to none. We particularly like that Canon has avoided the cheap looking plastic that's used on many of its DSLR cameras, opting for a metal finish that exudes greater visual and physical quality. It's not too heavy overall either, at sub 400 grams, while the finish means dust and drip proofing to avoid nature's elements causing damage. As per other high-end compact cameras, the G1X3 comes with a mode dial, separate exposure compensation dial and front control ring. The exposure compensation we've been using constantly, which is super useful when shooting dark, light subjects against opposing backgrounds. The front control ring, which, in aperture priority mode, acts as the aperture control, is a little too nestled in against the grip, which we found makes for accidental changes a little too often. Good as the build and operation are, however, the lens is, to some degree, the G1X Mark III's weak point. It's not that the quality is questionable. It's that the maximum aperture, i.e. the lens opening that lets light in to expose the sensor, is somewhat limited when extended. At its widest angle 24mm it offers an f-2.8 aperture, which means lots of light can enter, which is useful for keeping the sensitivity settings low when there's not much light. All good there, then. It's when extending the lens through its zoom that the aperture dips down to f/5.6 at the 72 mm equivalent. That means a whole lot less light reaches the sensor, which often means cranking up the ISO sensitivity to achieve the right exposure. We were taking some outdoor shots of statues and that meant having to ramp up the sensitivity to ISO 1600 to obtain a fast enough shutter speed for a sharp photo. Any small scale large sensor camera is going to succumb to such compromise, in reality, so whether these limitations will restrict your kind of shooting will affect whether the latest G1X3 is the camera for you. We would also like the lens to move through its available focal length at greater speed. Using the single lens control ring, the G1X3 doesn't have dual lens rings like some earlier Canon cameras, the subtle zoom can be useful for smaller adjustments but the toggle zoom atop the camera ought to be quicker at jumping between key focal lengths. Other than the slightly slow lens zoom, the G1X Mark III is quick in operation. This is thanks to dual pixel of, meaning the sensor has on-surface phase detection pixels for enhanced autofocus. It's the same feature that appears in Canon's DSLR lineup when using such cameras in their live preview mode, and it works pretty well. As a result this G1X is fairly snappy and capable of locking onto subjects. It's not as super fast as a Canon DSLRs through the viewfinder form of use. However, so don't expect quite that level of precision. As with all Canon compacts, this also means a simplification of the available focus types. Expect auto with face detection, touch to focus, or individual selection of the 45 areas available. It's decent as compacts go, 
but at this price we'd like to see far more complex autofocus modes, such as a pinpoint option, like you'll get with Panasonic's G-Series cameras. This has been a problem for some of our product photography. We had to shoot and reshoot the Microsoft Surface Book 2, for example, due to the large focus area opting to focus behind where we had positioned it. Close-up focus is also limited, you'll need to select macro mode manually, as is necessary with Canon compact cameras, but even then the minimum focus distance of 35 cm from lens at full extension isn't exactly macro. Again, that's to be expected with a large sensor compact. To counteract motion, the G1 XMK comes with dual sensing image stabilization, meaning the camera uses a gyro in the lens to provide information to the sensor for optimized processing. There's not a huge amount of data about the specifics of dual sensing is, but having shot hand held at 1 15th second in dark conditions, it certainly shows it's worth in keeping things looking sharp. If you're seeking burst shooting capabilities, then a solid 7 frames per second, 7 fps, burst mode is available with continuous autofocus, increasing to 9 fps if you fix the focus, that's pretty high at this level, although continuous autofocus with dual pixel if isn't quite perfect in our view. Again, it's not of a DSLR level. Other features include a physical built-in neutral density filter, which can be set to automatically position within the lens, along with Wi-Fi. Bluetooth, plus NFC, for quick sharing files via the smartphone app. There's also more control via the app, which adds autofocus control over Wi-Fi. If you're going to go large on such features then don't expect the battery to last for an age. Not that the small Li-ion battery inside is a particularly long laster. With 125 shots snapped we were down to around a third power remaining. So the 200 shots per charge quote seems believable. You might want to grab a spare battery though, which will further push that already high price point. In terms of quality, Canon is gunning for the G1X3 to deliver the same results as you'd get from the OS 80D. Given the right conditions, results between the two are close, but the DSLR has far greater potential thanks to interchangeable lenses which can avoid the aperture ceiling that the G1X3 suffers. That said, even with the aperture pushing up the ISO sensitivity, shots at ISO 6400 using a pre-production camera still exuded plenty of detail, color and clarity thanks to the large sensor size. We shot the colorful graphics of a retro pinball machine and the result was a step beyond what we had expected which is the beauty of a sensor so large. With the final production camera in hand, shooting a laptop for review at ISO 2000 held up ample detail to be used full screen. Such a sensor also means greater potential control over shallow depth of field. Shooting stone dog statues, with critical focus, really set apart the eyes from the nose, which is more control than a lesser compact camera would offer. However, as we pointed out earlier, the close-up macro focus is somewhat limited and we've not been able to get ultra-sharp results having had the final production camera in hand. At the top end of the sensitivity range ISO 25600 is available, which isn't the write-off that it may sound. Detail is far messier at this point, but the bookshelf shot we captured still awarded enough detail to the title spines for them to be legible. Overall. Then, image quality is the G1X3's forte. The limited aperture has a potential knock-on effect that may demand higher aperture settings, but given the scale of this sensor, being forced to raise the ISO sensitivity isn't always as bad as it might sound. On the video front, it's 1080p capture, which can utilize the dual sensing is for better stabilization. There's no 4K, but that's not something we expect to see outside of Canon's Pro Video range, as is the case in all its current cameras. In the world of compact cameras it's rare to find one with a sensor as large as an APS-C1. There's the never been followed up Nikon Cool Pixie from 2013, or the more recent Ricoh GR, and, until this third gen Canon reared its head. There's never been one with a zoom lens. That in itself makes the G1X3 a milestone camera. And a hugely capable one when it comes to image quality. In the same breath, 
It's also a somewhat limited camera. The aperture limitation from the 24 to 72 mm f/2.8 to 5.6 equivalent lens can be a little bit of an issue. The battery life is limited, while autofocus is quick but fairly simple and could do with some more complex and capable modes. Just look at the Sony RX100V to see how immense autofocus can be in a compact. Then there's the price point at £1,149. The wannabe DSLR replacement is every bit as pricey as a DSLR camera. Its small scale will excuse that for keen enthusiast buyers looking for a second camera, but for most the more versatile nature of a DSLR is unlikely to make the G1X3 a reality. The Canon PowerShot G1X Mark III has successfully replaced our go-to DSLR for the past week, so it's more than up to the task. But it hasn't done so in like-for-like -like fashion which makes it a good rather than outstanding camera. Some will love it, others will struggle to find justification for purchase.